few drawbacks of doing these reviews is the length of time it'll take me to get them finished. I usually try to get these videos out before the newest episode airs, but I've hit some roadblocks as of recent that's made that task difficult. In fact, most people had seen episode 10 of Dino Supercharge before I put out the review for episode 9 and couldn't wait to tell me how great this episode was. So is the episode really worth all the hype, or will I be disappointed? Well, let's go ahead and take a look and find out. This is episode 10, Gone Fishing. The episode opens with Riley, Chase, Shelby, and Coda fishing with Riley's brother Matt at the lake, all the while Riley's measuring fish to see who can catch the biggest one. Shelby sends a picture of Coda's catch to Tyler and Sir Ivan, who are busy helping Kendall, Prince Philip, and Tyler's dad find the Silver Energem. Not sure why the other rangers aren't also helping, but it's good to see the side rangers actually get involved in the story. Prince Philip says that the Zandarian Science Academy hasn't found the Silver Energem after searching the entire Earth, causing Kendall to question where it could be. Suddenly, the alarm signals a small object falling from space, and after the rangers find where it lands, it turns out to be a message from the Silver Ranger. The new ranger asks the team to reactivate the Titanozord, since the great distance between the Zord and the ranger has caused it to shut down. Or at least, that's what I'm assuming kickstarts the plot, since Silver just says the Zord is deactivated. Before the Space Ranger can reveal the Zord's location, Singe blasts the object, much to Fury's frustration, before the villains prepare to attack. The team morphs to take on the attacking generals and spike balls, managing to fight them off enough to take the space pod back to the base. Back with the other rangers, Riley continues to compete with the others, which drives Matt away, since he's just trying to have fun. On the ship, Fury attacks Singe, since now the villains don't know where the Titanozord is, but Snide says that Singe has already told him the Zord's location, ordering Fury to take a monster called Hookbeard with him to find it. Back at the lab, Kendall says that she can't retrieve the rest of the message, but that she's trying to isolate where it came from in hope of messaging the Silver Ranger. Meanwhile, the villains arrive at the lake, which it turns out is where the Titanozord is, and after seeing Matt on his boat, the monsters attack. Chase later calls Riley over when he finds Matt's singed boat, but luckily Matt wakes up inside the Titanozord and uses his phone to call Riley, telling him where he is. Coda then sees the monsters that attacked Matt, so the rangers hide behind a tree as Riley continues to talk to his brother. Matt sends them a picture of the Titano symbol, so the teens tell the other rangers and then just wait until they arrive. They don't even try to attack the monsters, they just kind of stand there. The other guys do arrive quickly though, leaving Kendall behind to make a Titano charger, but when Riley tries to tell his brother that he's going to be saved, he passes out from lack of air, leading to this. Oh, no, you don't, rangers! You'll pay for this. In your dreams! Uh, it's morphin' time! Dino Charger! Ready! Dino Charger! Engage! Energize! Uh, unleash the power! All right. The team gets to work fighting the monsters, but when Tyler tries to attack Hookbeard, he's flung across the lake where he runs into Fury. Keeper, however, steps in to help Tyler fend off Fury, forcing the monster to retreat. Keeper then tells Tyler to rejoin the others while he uses his space wizard powers to suck the water up from the lake and reactivate the Titanozord. Wrench, Curio, and Poisandra run in fear of this development before Tyler morphs into his battleizer, and after a quick fight, the team uses the Victory X chargers to take down Hookbeard. The team then watches the Titanozord rise from the lake, but its progress is slow by a giant hookbeard and spike balls. At that point, Kendall rides in with the Titano Charger, telling the others that the new Zord needs the powers of all their chargers to operate at full strength. Riley sits this one out, having to demorph to meet his brother, who's released when the Rangers charge up the Zord. The two brothers leave the Rangers to finish off Hookbeard and the Spike Balls, which is done pretty easily with Dino Superdrive and the new Titano Charge Megazord. After the fight, Heckle asks Singe how he knew the location of the Titano Zord, but Singe tries to attack the Master instead before getting blasted back. Singe then retreats back to the spaceship he was found in, which Heckle just lets him do for whatever reason, only telling Fury to destroy Singe if he ever sees him again. Back at the lake, Keeper returns the water to the lake, saying that the ranger's last task is to defeat Heckle, which shouldn't be too hard since we now have a nine-person ranger team, right? Step one is finding his base. I'm gonna make that my mission. We're getting really close, Tyler. Pretty soon this will all be over and we can be together again. I'm not changing the intro again. Back with Riley and Matt, the two have a heart-to-heart -heart with each other as they meet up with the other three rangers, and the episode ends with Coda eating worms. Okay. This episode is definitely worth the hype you guys have been giving it, and is probably my favorite episode of the season so far. Finally, we have an episode that exclusively focuses on our background rangers in action, making use of that whole largest ranger team ever concept that the season advertised itself as. In fact, the B-team rangers are in the forefront of the action so much that it felt like a classic Power Rangers team-up during the morphing sequence. Even Riley's relationship with his brother is done well here, because Riley's competitive nature feels consistent despite all the contradictory information we have about his origin. That said, 
I do take issue with how some things are handled in this episode, one of them being how when Matt gets trapped in the Titanozord, which is being attacked, four of the rangers wait for the other rangers to show up before they start fighting the monsters. I mean, I know that the other rangers are given the spotlight in this episode, but the whole thing seems really dumb, especially when it's Riley's brother whose life's at risk. I also thought the scene with Heckle and Singe was a bit off too, not only because Heckle just let the guy walk off the ship, but also because I felt that the sudden but inevitable betrayal was rushed and not set up all that well, since we find out in that scene that Heckle's been suspicious of Singe this whole time. Come to think of it, does it seem odd to anyone else that Singe knew where the Titanozord was at the same time the Silver Rangers sent a message? If I didn't know any better, I'd think the Rangers were being tricked to activate the Titanozord for the Silver Ranger, who's actually evil, but that's ridiculous, right? Haha. <laughs> hmm. And then there's the Tyler's dad thing, which I honestly laughed out loud at the first time I saw this episode, because at some point you gotta think that James is just a bad father. I mean, not only does he leave Tyler for the third time, but he also has the audacity to say that they'll be together when all this is over, as if anyone else is asking him to look for Heckle's base by himself. Overall, though, the pros of this episode far outweigh the cons, with enough awesome moments to make me forget about the occasional story hiccup, making it the best episode of the season so far. I'm Nick, aka IronBat1993, and may the power protect you.